Good morning, happy Saturday. Um, it is a grey and very chilly day out there today. But what I was going to talk about today is repotting seedlings because that conveniently is what I'm going to do today anyway. But I've also got a couple of examples of some really leggy seedlings. So I thought it's probably a good idea to kind of show you what I do with the really leggy seedlings. So we've talked about it before and it's a sort of a running thing about not getting too overexcited with sowing masses at this time of year really early because it's not just temperatures which are affecting the plants it's the light levels and unless you've got you know an actual light setup there just isn't enough hours of daylight to kind of sustain them even downstairs in the conservatory which is like all glass glass ceiling glass walls the whole lot there's just like not enough light happening in the day to really sustain some of the seedlings so i've ended up with some quite leggy ones. There's some things which are more difficult to kind of repair after they've got really leggy. Most of the ones of mine which have got quite long are brassicas because I like to sow them really early. And I know that leggy brassicas is really not a problem. And in fact, they benefit from being buried really deep up to their seed leaves. So, so that's things like these guys. So these are my azure kohlrabi. As you can see, there's quite a bit of gap between there and that is light levels. But I'm going to plant these all the way up to this point. So I'm going to put them in this size pot and it's going to be sunk all the way in. The stem between here and here will grow roots. So I'm not worried about that. Like I say, there are some things that I've had much less success burying deep and they tend to be things with really fleshy stems. Tomatoes are just brilliant at being planted deep. You can plant them above their seed leaves and they'll just root all the way up. Another thing I'm going to be potting up really deeply today are some of my chilli plants, which you can see from the texture of the... Hang on, I'm just going to come round. Can you see the texture on those stems that it's not totally smooth at the bottom? That's just going to turn into root. So I will bury these chilies right up to their neck. I've already done that with some of the ones which were growing much faster. So these guys, this is an Anaheim chili. This had a really, really long stem and I buried it right in and that was about a week ago and they're coming along really nicely now and you've got to remember that I don't have grow lights so this isn't a problem that people who have a really good setup with grow lights are going to have but for us kind of just window ledge kind of sewers leggy is a problem um, there's a balance to be had between um, not getting overexcited and sowing everything too early and ending up with loads of leggy seedlings and plants that just aren't that strong they're not robust enough really but there's also a managing when you're doing window ledge gardening and i don't have a great deal of space to actually keep seedlings and keep the plants growing on that i've got to be quite careful about managing how many seedlings i've got at the moment like i can't have 30 trays of seedlings because I just don't have anywhere to keep them. So it's kind of a balancing act between knowing what you can plant that bit earlier. And if it does become leggy, it's not going to be really damaging to the plant versus the things that you really know. It'd just be a disaster show. I've done a couple of years where I've leapt ahead too early with beans, particularly like the climbing beans, French beans, that sort of thing. And it is never an advantage. Like I, I go quite late with my beans now just because I've done it so often. And the problem is, is that they grow so quickly that you end up with, you know, these plants all wound around each other and it's a, it's a bit of a pest. But things like brassicas, I space out because I know that they bury really nicely. I also like to grow them in batches so that I don't have like 40 cabbages ready at the same time. I have, I sow five cabbages in, like in February five cabbages in April, you know, and keep going that way. And then I know that I've got enough space to look after them and I've got enough room in my life for that many cabbages when they're actually ready. 
So yeah, I'm gonna stop chatting and just get on with planting some of these. Hang on, let me just get the soil. I've got about eight kohlrabi here. Um, at this point, I label them up individually to go into the pots. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna plant these now. And then I'll show you how I labeled my chilies when I was sowing them in the Jiffy pellets. So these Jiffy pellets, this is the first year I've been using them like a lot. And I don't know how well the roots are coming through the bottom. Like there's, these are quite big plants and there's no roots showing, which is slightly concerning, which is another reason why actually burying them up to their necks, probably a good idea because they're gonna have all of that free root space in there. So yeah, I'm just gonna pot these up now. Okay, so I've gone from that to that. So brassicas like really, really like solid soil. They don't like to move around too much. But when you are planting deep, you've got to be really careful because when you're... You've got to be really careful because this stem here is so delicate that if you bury that up in soil and then push the soil down really hard around it you're just going to break the stem so I tend to do you see how I was just like tipping that in I tend to do the tipping in method just hold it up and then push in from around the edge so there's a good amount of soil in there but it's just not crushed around the plant and then as that grows and matures and you get more root growing and the plant starts growing then when you plant it up into the next pot you can really give it a good old push down inside. You just don't want to be snapping their stems. And I'm gonna label these as I go because now they're going into individual pots, it's a bit more tricky to keep track. I just had a couple of these that haven't germinated at all. shorter if I put him right in the bottom he's going to be completely smothered so in this case I will just put some in there and rest him on top surprised look quite a lot of them didn't come up I hadn't noticed when they were all in together like I couldn't see what was what so like I said these are kohlrabi and if I had been growing if this was my second wave of kohlrabi so later in the year so say this was about mid-April I would uh hang on how do you spell them as your age your Rabi. Yeah, if this was April and my second load, I would probably have left these to get ever so slightly bigger in the pellets and then just put them straight outside and hope the slugs stayed away. But at the moment, it's not really so much that it's too cold, but actually the bed that I want them to go into is still occupied. So I'm going to be keeping these indoors for quite a bit of time which is why it's worth putting them in these kind of pots but I'm not going to be keeping these at home they're going to go up into the coal frame because as with most brassicas these are pretty tough they don't need to be molly coddled at home they'll be just fine out in the wilds of the allotment okay so that's these guys they are buried up to their necks 
I'll take these outside and give them a water and then cart them up to the allotment. That's the same pretty much for all brassicas, so you can bury them all pretty deep at this stage. And when you plant them out, you want to really anchor them into the soil because they, they really hate wobbling around. But for the moment when you're burying them that deep, just watch out for the stems. The next thing I'm going to do is put up some chilies. So I'm going same size pots for the chilies. I've got kind of two sizes of chili to pot up. I sowed my very first lot, which were these guys, which I sowed on the 2nd of January, I think it was. They're the first lot I did, which is also these same guys. Um, they were sown on the same day, but then the second wave. So because I've only got limited space in my like heated propagator, I couldn't sow them all at the same time. So I started with a load of chilies and then I moved on. So it would have been about, mm, yeah, I guess it would have been about three weeks between them. And this is the second lot. And I'm going to pot them all up today. I lost quite a few of the second set because I brought, when I brought these ones upstairs, I brought them up into my bedroom and they were just sat on the window ledge quite happy and they had a cover over them. When these guys germinated, I brought them upstairs, put them on the window ledge as well. But my windows are not exactly hermetically sealed and where I'd put these, I didn't put the cover over them. And although the room temperature was all right, we had that whole series of really, really cold nights. And there was a draft coming in through the window that I didn't notice. And it basically just took out a swathe of them, including one whole set variety, which was my um, long purple aubergines. All of them went in that cold draft, which is so annoying. I've since actually put cling film up against my windows because the ambient room temperature was fine. It was just that you could basically see the line where the draft had been going across the seedlings. So that was really frustrating. I've quite enjoyed using these Jiffy pellets, particularly the big ones. I found the smaller ones a bit fiddly, to be honest, but the bigger ones really fantastic. And the only problem I was coming up against was labelling because when you're doing loads and loads of different varieties but you don't want a whole tray of them and you cannot actually get a lolly stick which is what I use as my markers into these jiffy pellets so I've been using this method which is just dipping the ends of cocktail sticks into paint, letting them dry obviously. And then, so all of my, what variety is that? Actually, I've got a key. Right, key to the cocktail sticks. Bright orange, which is this chap here. These are my banana peppers. So that's the orange ones are banana peppers. I've got the blue ones are black Zulu. The purple ones are the Romano. Yeah, so that's how I've been doing it. But it does mean that each one of these is labelled separately and I'll just, once it's big enough, pot them up and they're good to go. What it also means is that you can move them around quite easily. So these have all been like quite packed in there and yeah, I can pick each individual one out by the cocktail stick and it makes them just that little bit easier to move around. So I'm just going to pop these up now. But the moral of the story is don't be afraid to bury your seedlings quite deep, particularly up to those seed leaves. So the first two leaves that they make are not real leaves. Can you see there's a difference in shape? So you've got these two ones here are the proper leaves and these two are the seed leaves. So as long as you don't bury it above the seed leaves, you should be absolutely fine. So this is my last weekend working from home. I'm going back into the college on, well, not Monday, I don't work Mondays, but on Tuesday. So yeah, not working from home anymore, which is an absolute joy. I'm really looking forward to going back. Look at that, that's quite nice. There's a proper root coming through there. come around that corner you can see my tracksuit trousers which I'd like to say are 
got lobsters all over them. See, I thought I was going to be, it's like zoom outfit, so I thought no one was going to be able to see me from the waist down. But yeah, lobster trousers. I love them. I bought them in Hong Kong. Was it last year? No, last year didn't happen. Not last year, the year before in a market. How could you see a pair of tracksuit trousers covered in lobsters and not buy them? Don't know. Anyway, what all that was about was just saying that if you've got leggy seedlings, plant them deep and don't worry about it too much. The things to be cautious of is don't crush the stems when you're really firming them in. Be a bit gentle until they've grown their roots because they're going to need a bit of time to get those roots going. But yeah, this is going to be my Saturday afternoon. I'm going to be doing this. The other thing I'm going to do is go and see if I can find myself a bicycle, probably a second hand bike, because, um, because I'm going back to work. We're not supposed to be going on public transport and it's about... I have done the walk before, it's about a three hour walk. Don't fancy that. I do have an electric scooter, but I had an electric scooter before everybody else had an electric scooter. And I used to really enjoy it because I just go along the Thames, drop down at Richmond and then head up to Battersea. It was about 45 minutes, but the scooter took me there, no problem. But now the streets are absolutely full of these idiots on scooters who just go at like, 200 miles and they don't go at 200 miles an hour scooters don't go at 200 miles an hour but it feels like it because i'm like massively cautious um yeah so i'm going to see if i can buy a bicycle and get to work that way so i'm not very good at riding a bike just so you know so it's a bit of a <laughs> it could be it could be a mistake but yeah i'm just going to carry on doing this for the saturday so happy weekend chaps i hope you've got a good one planned we had some lovely weather like at the beginning of the week, but it's been a bit pants since. I mean, it's really gray out there today. And yesterday, mum and I were at the allotment and got so cold. You know, sometimes it's not just the temperature. It's just something in the air, like it's just so damp and it gets right into your bones. And it took us absolutely ages to warm up when we got home. So we're pretty much hiding inside today, other than going for the bicycle. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna pop these up and that's that. Yeah. <laughs> See you on Tuesday.